Hello everyone. Welcome to Quill Scene Gaming. I'm Quill Scene, and we are going to be playing Subnautica for my very first Let's Play. Uh, we are going to play on Survival. <clears throat> Excuse me. Survival is uh, crash land on a dangerous alien planet, scavenge resources, and manage hunger and thirst to survive. I want the hunger and thirst so we won't do freedom, and I want more than one life just in case something goes wrong. So we're going to play on our basic survival level. Here we go. So as the introduction is playing here, um, this is a let's play. We're going to, I'm going to show you everything. Um, I have played this game before. It is not a blind. Um, it has been quite a while since I've played. Um, so I wanted to share that re-experience uh, with you. And what else was I going to tell you? I do have the PDA pause turned on um, so that we can read uh, without worrying about drowning or anything like that. Um, I do have it set. Uh, yeah, I said PDA pause. I do have it set on my own custom graphics because my computer's a little bit older. As you can tell, it's taking a while to load here. Um, we're going to be scanning and reading everything I find. I'm going to try to make this as complete of a playthrough as possible. Um, so yeah, let's see where it goes. Love this music. I forgot how much I love this music. All right. So here we go. Press any button to continue. There's the any button. Attention. failure imminent. All personnel, abandon ship. <laughs> yeah. Get in the chair. In three, two, one. All right. Looks like we could have had room for another person, but okay. ship. I'm sure we'll see it again later. Not good. Not good. Not. Ow. It cracked my eyeballs. Maybe I had a helmet on already. I don't remember. Let me out. Come on. There we go. Hello, wake up. <laughs> that always makes you me laugh. Suffered minor head trauma. This is considered an optimal outcome. This PDA has now rebooted in emergency mode with one directive, to keep you alive on an alien world. Please refer to the data bank for detailed survival advice. Good luck. Ah, PDA voice, how I've missed you. All right, so let's go to mouse floor. Yeah, like it's made and out. All right. Yeah, I think it's tab in the uh, original settings, but I have my settings change to a mouse button to open and close the PDA. All right, blueprints. Um, I'm not going to read these right now, but as we need things, I'll read those then, I guess. Um, but we will go to the start here in survival checklist. Oh, let's start here. Because these I don't think I would ever come back to. Um, two birth emergency life pod. Standard features, short range radio, 250 kilometers uninterrupted range. So that should be, you know, more than enough. Wall mounted fabricator for survival equipment, manufacture, and for rendering organic substances edible. All right. We get to eat. Medical kit fabricator. Onboard air brake and flotation devices for land, sea, or space recovery. Solar power cells times three. Emergency exits on the floor and on the roof. Our standard provisions are two all-environment protection suits, two ready-to-eat nutrient blocks, two drinking water provisions, one emergency med kit, 
and two emergency flares. Notabellum, which means take note, some life, po life pods may be equipped with different supplies, such as radiation suits and replacement parts. Board the right life pod for the right situation. The all enver all in all bleh, I can't talk. All environment protection suit. The Altera AEP suit, a single solution for a universe of infinite danger. You are currently wearing an AEP suit, a hermetically sealed personal environment designed to withstand the most extreme conditions in the known universe. Onboard temperature and hydration regulation, compatible with a range of attachments, slimline build for maximum freedom of movement, biometric sensors, contextual heads-up display. AEP suits should always be equipped before life pod launch in case of a hull breach. And I... That's probably what I've got on, then, I assume. I know we make more suits later, but I don't remember which ones. Um, ship class, the Aurora ship status. Ship class, Altera Long Range Capital Ship. The mission is the Ariadne Arm Phase Gate installation with a three-year operation time. The crew, there's a command team of 23, an engineering team of 85, support crew of 40, and passengers 9. I don't remember what we are, or if we even find out. We're probably support crew or engineering, though, I would assume. Uh, status. Sustained heavy damage in orbit of planet 4546B. Cause unknown. Evacuation data unavailable. Engineering section. Dark matter ion drive core v <laughs> V8. I think I've driven a V8 before. Uh, manned robotics suite, advanced scanner suite, long-range communications relay, a quarter of a cubic kilometer of storage for phase gate apparatus. Holy cow, that is a lot of storage. That must be most of the ship. Uh, the habitation section, accommodation for 150 people. How many was this? 85, 108... 148, we're over, overbooked, uh, so what is that, 157, combinations for 150 people, okay, multiple canteens serving healthy, fresh, and rehydrated food, leisure facilities including a VR suite and virtual cinema, start here. If you're reading this, then you have survived an emergency evacuation of a capital-class ship equipped with Altera technology. Congratulations! The hard part is over. Yeah, somehow I doubt that. Um, your PDA has automatically rebooted in emergency mode. This operating system has one directive, to keep you alive on a hostile alien world. If Hostile? Wait a minute. Uh, if that's not possible, it will alert salvage teams to the location of your remains. Yeah, but if no rescue's coming, then how is anyone going to find my remains? It features full monitoring of vital signs for timely survival advice, blueprints for fabricating a range of essential survival equipment tailored to your environment, onboard camera, microphone, and OCR technology for short-range situational analysis, cross-compatibility with all Altera-compliant products, Notabellum, your personal and work files have been encrypted and may be retrieved at a later date by a licensed engineer. That's right. That's why we can't find out about ourselves on here, because our stuff's encrypted. All right. The survival checklist. Number one, administer first aid if required. Number two, take an inventory of available materials and supplies and decide on rations. Number three, survey the environment for threats and resources. Number four, construct necessary survival equipment using the life pods fabricator. Number five, uh, check life pod for damage, repair as necessary. Six, broadcast local distress signal using the life pod short range radio. Number seven, locate other survivors using line of sight or the radio. Number eight, find or construct a more permanent habitat. That's the fun part of this game is building our habitat. Number nine, maintain physical and psychological health until rescue. Notabellum, this information is meant as a general guide. In the first instance, you should always follow the advice of your PDA 
which has taken your particular circumstances into account. Warning, blueprint database corrupted. Damage to your PDA's hard drive has corrupted 80% of the stored survival blueprints. Blueprints may be reacquired by scanning a salvage technology using the handheld scanner or by downloading plans from a shipboard data box. In the circumstances, these assets will most likely be found amongst the wreckage from the Aurora. Alrighty. So that's that. Voice log. We don't have anything yet. That's right, we can take photos. The beacon. Here's all of our blueprints we do know. Okay. In inventory. All I've got right now is silly fire extinguisher, which we're just going to put away. Um, we'll take a water and a food. And we need to heal up. Uh, no, I have to use it from here. That's right. There we go. These are all online. Oh, here we go. Warning, circuitry test failed, secondary systems offline, radio offline, the stress signal broadcast failed, flotation devices deployed, hull integrity is okay though, that's good. Have to repair that, that's our fabricator, we can make all of the stuff we'll need, and that's damaged. Let's go up. Suffered orbital hull failure. Cause unknown. Zero human life signs detected. That's impressive. Oh, I see a little something swimming in there. I don't see anything else. I remember there's some things that stick above the surface, usually around the life pod, but the life pod crash lands in a different spot every time. So the only way to tell where we really are, although I can sort of tell from the relationship with the Aurora, um, yeah, we're probably near the southern end. I don't remember exactly. So let's get in the water and see where we are. I love the visuals in this game. Catch fish so we can eat. Alien life forms may have unexpected applications. Utilizing alien resources is a proven survival strategy. Copper is an essential component of all powered equipment. Your probability of survival has just increased to unlikely, but plausible. Looks like we've got some wreckage. I can't catch him. There we go. Oh, yeah, we need to breathe. Yeah, so we've got down here, in case you've never played this game before, your oxygen that's in seconds, although it can go faster, and you'll see why, why later. 100% health right now, 45% on the food. 83% on water. Food goes down slower than water. Water tends to be the biggest problem in this game that I have found. Um, so yeah, we'll have to keep an eye on those. Those are important. Uh, voice log. Oh, that's right. This just replays um, the things that the PDA has told us. So I've got a boomerang, a bladder fish, and some copper. And there's some wreckage right below us, so let's look through it, see if we see anything. Can't pick that up. Oh, that's right. This thing's like a... Okay, we're right near a heat vent. That's nice. Actually, this might be a great spot for our first base later, because there is thermal technology you can use to... Ooh, hot. I forgot hot. Thermal? Yes. Thermal means hot. Hello. Take you again. Oh. Oxygen. Back up. That's right. One of the first things I got to make is a uh, oxygen tank because 
Oxygen's always a problem early on in this game. There's some... Ah, peepers are too fast. We'll get one later. I've got a boomerang already. I can eat that. There's a way into this, and I don't know if I want to do it until there's a, um, I have oxygen, because let's see if I can catch a peeper. Come here, peeper. Nope, they're just way too fast this stage of the game. Oh, I need fins, too. There's creep vine right there. Okay, good. Oxygen. Let's cook us up some food. Oh yeah, titanium out of the metal salvage, yes. Please. Water is made from bladder fish. I get one or two of those, two of them, I guess. Okay. And for food, we'll eat a boomerang. I'm gonna need more food, I think, though. Um, what can I make? Let's go ahead and get that oxygen tank, perfect. And now I've got a high capacity oxygen tank. Which I should be able to get fairly soon. We'll see. Let's let's pin some things here, because I need to make a scanner. I need a repair tool to fix my life pod. Definitely gonna want a flashlight when it gets dark. I need a knife. Not a fan of the air bladder, and it just takes up space, and the habitat builder we're not there yet. Um gonna want fins. I'll want that eventually, but we're not there yet. Oh yeah, sea glide. What else can I make here? Battery. I'm gonna use copper ore to make a battery, that's right. Oh, I need acid mushrooms. Okay. Alright, let's get out of that. And eat the boomerang. Drink some water, and I gotta go find more food. Oh, that's right. This regenerates, so when that hits 100%, I'll be able to get another uh, med kit. Um, where was that? This way. I forgot how slow you swim in the beginning. Let's get some mushrooms and we can make that, um, make a battery and then make the scanner right now. That way we'll have the scanner with us. Scanner's the most important thing in this game. You have to scan everything, literally. Um, scanning everything gives you blueprints, it gives you information, it gives you lore. Um, this game is super deep. Uh, super deep with the... can be used to synthesize blueprints from salvage technology and to record alien biological data. That's what I was just going to say, recording alien biological data. Um, it's really deep and detailed with its biology in this game, which is kind of impressive. Um, so that's new. Let's see what new blueprints did we get. A power cell. That's just a couple of batteries and the high capacity O2 tank we already knew about. I'm a stickler for keeping these things cleared, so expect me to click through this stuff often. All right, let's go scan something. Ooh. Whole fish. Come here, your food. I'll scan a few things and then we'll read. Sometimes there's stuff in these boxes, so you're going to have to look at all of them. That one's... Oh, yeah, like that. See? Sea glide fragment. One of two. You need two of those. And there's our door, I think. Is that what I'm saying? Yes. Hard to see on my screen sometimes, so I... Uh, oops. Don't want to feed the fish. Right back down and we'll try to go into this thing. It's dark. Integrating new PDA. Oh, Terra search and rescue mission for the Degasi survivors. Degasi crew manifest Paul Twergle. We're the Aurora, not the Degasi. This is a different ship. Auxiliary search and rescue mission Paul Twergle. Position chief of Torgel Corps, captain of the Degasi. 
Status, it was lost in space near planet 4546b. He was approximately 79 years old when he disappeared. Paul Torgel and his crew fell out of contact with the Mongolian authorities close to a decade ago, so 10 years ago that Agassi disappeared. The Torgels were a resourceful and powerful clan, and the ship was well-equipped, so their survival is considered likely. However, multiple vessels passing through the system have since attempted to trace the ship to no effect. It is hoped that the Aurora's superior scanning suite can do better. Good. Uh, he was made majority shareholder in Torgel Court by his mother upon her retirement. His interaction with Altera is limited to infrequent chartered munitions deliveries. He's the beneficiary beneficiary of life extension technologies. He's accompanied by his only child, Bart Torgel, 19 years old, heir to the Torgel Corporation. Emissary Kassar reports that Torgel often traveled with a skeleton crew and was known for making rash but profitable decisions. Uh, inadequate systems maintenance or straying from its planned route may account for the ship's disappearance. Okay. Indigenous life forms, giant coral tubes. The variety of coral formations on 4546B appear to be different solutions to the same problem of maximizing, maximizing water and nutrient flow throughout the colony. These particular variants funnel water down a tube, filtering nutrients as they pass. Their size suggests they have been highly successful. Assessment, coral tube samples are rich in calcium, exploitable in bleach fabrication. Okay. Small herbivores, the whole fish. Aw, so cute. The whole fish is a very small herbivore found in low numbers, often around cave system entrances where their skin coloration blends into the background. They have a bored out tail fin. That's a hole in there, hence the name, I guess. Number one. Oh, yeah, we're reading number one. Uh, by manipulating the size and shape of the hole in its tail, it can perform unpredictable maneuvers. Okay. Size. It's smaller than most other herbivores, presumably due to lack of vegetation in low-light environments. Assessment, edible. Oh, you'll be edibled. I will edible you, all right. Flora exploitable, the acid mushroom. A common spore-bearing fungi species, the flesh contains a highly acidic compound which leaches into the water if the outer skin is penetrated. It is not clear which predator species necessitated such extreme countermeasures, but the acid mushrooms numbers suggest it is, has successfully deterred most of them. Assessment inedible, inedible, but the acid has applications in battery fabrication. Okay. Close all these. <clears throat> all right, let's see what's in this. Oh man, I cannot see a thing. Something came up. Where is it? There. Oh, a desk. Okay. Near blueprint acquired. Oop, something there. Where is it? Why can I not see it? There. Oh, a beacon fragment. Okay. It is hard to see in here. I don't know if. Oh, another beacon fragment. There we go. Another one. I think you get titanium. Yeah, you get titanium if you've scanned something. Oh, I need a repair tool. Oh, let's come back when I've got more tools. It's just right here by the life pod. Let's get more food. Oh, what are you? Oh, no. Ah, come back. Okay, well, oxygen. More important than food right now. Sun's going down. I do need to find some food, though. I accidentally dropped my last meal. Come on. There we go. Oh, that's one of those peepers. Come on. Pick him up. Come on. Oh my gosh. There he goes. All right. That's enough food for right now. I'll scan them later when I'm faster. Gotta make those fins, that's right. I need rubber. I forget what what do I need for rubber? 
Uh, let's cook them up. Enjoy a nice dinner. The cooks small organisms while disposing of the skeletal structure, bodily fluids, and internal organs, thus rendering them safe for human consumption. I need more copper to make a beacon. What was I looking for? Oh, rubber. Creepvine seed cluster. Okay, that's over in that creepvine area. Um, let's eat. All right. We're full. Yay. What did I get new blueprints of? I don't need the battery recipe anymore. I made a scanner. Might be nice to have a beacon on me. In case we find something and need to find our way back. Oh, a desk. Yeah, we're not ready for desks yet. Um, oh, so dark. I don't even remember which way it was. Trying to find creep vine. I can't. Ah, there, there. The glowing yellow is what I was looking for. It seems a lot further away. I think I went the wrong direction, but I still managed to find some. Yeah, I'm way far away. Oh, there's is that the wreck over there? Detecting increased local radiation levels. Trend is consistent with damage to the Aurora's drive core sustained during planet four. Okay. There's my wreck. No, this is a different one. Short-range scans suggest this biome supports extensive biodiversity and connects to a number of small cave networks. Grav trap fragment. Another grav trap fragment. That should do it. A counter. Print acquired. New blueprint acquired. Another grav trap fragment. Alright, let's go up and then grab another grav trap fragment. Yeah, this is a different. I, I went the wrong way, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I swam away from the Aurora instead of towards it that time. But luckily, kelp is plentiful. run into some eventually. I'm not finding any metal salvage around. <clears throat> Usually around wrecks like this you'll find metal salvage. Let's grab some bladder fish because they're always needing water. Let's head back, mix some water, cook up that fish, make ourselves, what can we make? What was I making? Oh, the knife I'll be able to make, the swim fins I'll be able to make. I almost am detecting increased radiation levels, that's right. Let's see what we scan. Bladder fish. This unusual herbivore appears to be mostly defenseless and bears little resemblance to the other life forms around it. Semi-permeable bladder. The bladderfish is able to filter air and seawater into its body cavity through a unique membrane 
which surrounds its spine like a bladder. This allows it to remove and consume organic particulates caught in the way and adjust its buoyancy. Open-ended vascular tubing can be angled and contracted to pump out water and achieve low-velocity guided propulsion. It's largely oblivious to threats and practically immobile at night. Yeah, we just saw that. Its only identified defense mechanism is that it's composed of almost entirely of water, air, and cartilage. Assessment edible. Oxygen may be retrieved from the bladder and added to the tanks on consumption. I totally had forgotten that. The membrane has applications as a natural water filter. Spadefish, a medium-sized herbivore found in deeper waters. Single eye, observed swimming near the seabed from where it can keep its one eye on predators in the water above it. Mottled green coloration. Commonly encountered in plant-rich environments, the spadefish is well adapted to hide amongst the vegetation. The behavior? Spadefish tend to move in loose shoals and, despite their low speed, will take necessary measures to avoid confirmed predators. Assessment? Edible. All right, well, let's, well, let's see what we got here first. Oh, yeah, we want the grav trap. It makes fishing easier. Oh, and the counter. That's right. Oh, I forgot how big these are. Okay, let's just get them all transformed here. Oh, the lubricant too, yeah. Lubricant is essential in construction of the two of each and power plants. Two rubber, two lubricant. Power's going down. Oh, it's at nighttime? Yeah, because we have solar cells, that's right. Water. Water. Food. Drink, eat. And you can go over on food, but I don't believe here we'll try it. I don't think you can go over on water. No, water's 100%. That's its max. So you waste water if you over drink. Lubricant essential, yes. All right. Well, I think that'll do it for our first episode. And by the way, my very first episode. So hopefully you've enjoyed this and hopefully I get better as time goes by. So if you've enjoyed it, please like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, all that good stuff. Thank you very much, and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye.